M3 Lee Grand medium tank. The origins of the tank design. The US Army was lagging behind in tank design and numbers when the war broke out in Europe in 1939. Their armed force was about 400 tanks in total and most of that were M2 light tanks, which were already obsolete. The German Blitzkrieg and the quick fall of France suddenly forced Allied countries to rethink their tank design and doctrine. The M3 medium was designed as a stopgap tank as the German success made it painfully clear how ill-equipped was the US Army in terms of armor. Design and Development The M3's design started in July 1940 and the first prototype was completed in March 1941. It was largely based on the T5E2 prototype which was basically a larger M2 tank equipped with a 75mm gun in a sponson. By 1940, the M4 Sherman design was well underway and planned for production, but many of its features, the turret for example, were far from ready and the US forces needed a medium tank, which they can fill quickly and has better armor and armament than the M2 light tanks. The T5E2 prototype design was chosen as a base for the stopgap model, as they could reuse many parts from the M2 tanks with minimal modifications and it was already designed to carry the 75mm gun. Because of this, the M3 was basically a scaled-up M2 tank with a more heavily armored and bigger hull so it can accommodate the 75mm gun in a sponson on the front right. Initial plans were to use the 75mm gun against both ground targets and enemy tanks, but eventually a smaller 37mm gun was added in a turret as it was still favored for the anti-tank role. Almost the whole of the suspension and track system was used from the M2 model with some modifications for easier production. The design quickly entered production as both the US Army and the United Kingdom was in need of new medium tanks. The British, after losing most of their equipment in France, initially asked the US to manufacture British design tanks for them, but that was refused, and they were offered the M3 instead, which they weren't keen on but accepted it after asking for some modifications, but more on that a bit later. Originally, the M3 had 7-man crew, driver, commander, gunner, loader, upper gunner, machine gunner and radio operator. Later this was reduced to 6 and even 5 men. Armament 75mm main gun in the hull mounted on a sponson. 37mm gun in a fully rotating turret. 2, 3, sometimes even 4 30 caliber machine guns. Armor 51mm on the half front and the turret. 38mm on the hull sides and rear. Engine The original engine was a Wright Continental air-cooled aircraft-based engine, which was again a great choice for speeding up the production. On the other hand, it didn't have the overall size of the tank, which in the end was about 10 feet tall, presenting a big target for enemy gunners. Later versions of the tank used other types of engines as well. And that takes us to the different variants of the M3 Lee. Given its relatively short production time, the M3 didn't get too many upgrades, but still received some refinements during its run. 300 units of the M3A1 were built, which featured the cast rounded hull instead of the riveted original design. Followed by the M3A2, which had a cast hull, but with sharper edges and only 12 units were produced. Then the M3A3, which featured a welded hull, the engine was swapped for two GM diesel engines, which could be operated independently if needed. This variant had a production run of 322 units. The M3A4 had a stretched hull as it used five six-cylinder Chrysler engines mated together because of the shortage of tank engines at the time. The British version of the M3 was called Grand. It had a six-man crew and a different turret which lacked the top machine gun cupola but it was bigger to accommodate the wireless radio set. Combat history being a stopgap design, the M3 was not supposed to see action during the entire war, but in the end many M3s were still in use until 1945. The first combat action for US Army M3s came in North Africa in Operation Torch, then the race for Tunis and they participated in the Battle of Gasserin Pass. The M3 equipped units were slowly converted over to M4 Shermans as the M4 production picked up by 1943 but sometimes depleted units got M3s as replacement in place of Shermans. It was still in use in the Sicily campaign in 1943. In March 1944, the M3 was declared obsolete. Most of them were converted for other use, or used for spare parts. On the British side, the M3 first saw action in the Battle of Gazala, 
and it was used in all major engagements of the North African campaign. By 1943, they were gradually replaced by M4 Shermans. The replaced British M3 tanks were sent to the Far East, where they were in use up until the end of the war. The M3 production ran from 1941 to 1942. 6,258 units were built in total, and through land lease, 2,855 units were given to the United Kingdom and 1,396 units to the USSR. Other variants of the M3 chassis M7 Priest self propelled howitzer, M31 recovery vehicle, gun motor carriage M12, Sexton Mark I self propelled gun, kangaroo personal carrier. I hope you guys enjoyed this new format and this a bit more informative video. It's just the first of this series and many will follow. Please do leave a comment on what other vehicles you'd like to see.